because we want your body to be supported, loved, and ready to thrive. And you know what? Then it works with you. You can ditch the fat. You can feel your best. You can run your best. You can perform your best. You can hike your best. All the things that you love to do. Welcome back, ladies, to another episode. I'm so glad that you are here. And today I'm hopping on with a solo sode. I'm going to get right to it because this episode comes from just the bottom of my heart and seeing the women that I coach, those that I love, my friends who are struggling with perimenopause, these changing hormones that happen age 35 and beyond. I'm going to share today five root causes why you're still stuck. And this is a little eye-opening when I have these discussions with some individuals, like they never really stop to think about it this way. And it is the most like eye-opening thing while rather simple sometimes, it's just so helpful when somebody else points it out. So if you're sitting there and you're just like throwing up your hands in the air, like holy hell, perimenopause, what is happening in my body? Or maybe you just started tuning into the podcast and you realize like, oh crap, perimenopause starts at 35. Like what? This is why I'm stuck changing hormones? Uh Uh-oh. I know that's like a novel idea still, unfortunately. Um, in our world, because we're just starting to understand and talk about this openly, which is ridiculous when we stop and think about it, right? But I won't go down that rabbit hole. I just want to share, you know, some of these women who come to Breaking Through Wellness in our Badass Breakthrough Academy program, What, where were they stuck? What were some of the root causes? What was holding them back? What are some of these common areas where you're trying so hard in your health, fitness, or running, and you're just not seeing the results. It's like your body is fighting you. You are so frustrated and you're trying to get informed. You're trying to seek support and you feel like you're getting nowhere. So let's break down a few examples for you today. And as you guys know, I have a very like holistic and integrative background. So we look at our clients as a whole person. And we look at all these different areas, right? Your gut health, your metabolism, why your weight's stuck, how to balance your hormones, how to achieve your fitness results, whether you want that fit lean look, or you just want to feel like your freaking self again. You want to feel energized when you run, or you're still chasing the PRs. This is a crazy time in our life where we start to feel like our body's fighting us, but that doesn't have to be our story. So let's talk through a couple of these areas where we get stuck. Number one, we cannot take advice from a 20 year old. And I say that with love, but you know, I have very amazing women who come into our program and they may have been taking macros from a 20 year old. That's like very like fit and lean on Instagram. And she's got a shred program and my gosh, she looks great. I need to do her program. And when we talk through it in our, in their coaching journey, like we're almost laughing about it because I did that too, guys. I took macros from a male bodybuilding coach who was going to help me get fit, lean and amazing looking. And you know what I did? And you know what I also did do? Destroy my metabolism, hormones. And while I looked fit for a short amount of time, I was fucked on the other side. So I'm just saying it like that because I've been there, done that. So I can laugh about it with you because I've done it (laughs) and it sucks. So if you find yourself, it's so easy when we scroll to like see these fitness programs or these shred programs, or even like some of these canned programs that we've tried in the past that we used to like gravitate towards like, oh my gosh, that time I did Jillian Michaels tape or that time that I did a beach body program. Or I remember when I did P90X, like all these solutions, they must be the solution. I have to go back because it worked before, but holy shit. Now it's not. I hear this all the time too on the nutrition side of things where how did Whole30 work so good before? Or how did my friends low carb challenge? I used to be able to see my my abs for the pool and I can't. Guys, the changing hormones influence breaking everything and it sucks. So no, we can't take our macros from a 20 year old. No, we can't hire a male bodybuilding coach and think that we're going to get there in a safe and effective way with sustainable results, right? We might see results, but they're not going to stick around. And they're at the expense of our health, hormones, metabolism, gut health, um, and vibrant well-being, if we're being honest, right? So first common mistake, we cannot take advice from 20-year-olds. 
that whether that's a male fitness trainer at the gym, he might be able to help us a little bit, but he's not going to understand the complexities of these dynamically changing hormones and how you should strategically lift, right? So, so many examples we could go down a rabbit hole. And I say this from a place of love again, right? Because sometimes we're like in the moment and we want the results so bad that we don't stop to be like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, not exactly my demographic, right? So common mistake number one. Second place that is the most frustrating, my goodness. And this comes from a real life example today where I, you know, was troubleshooting with the other coaches around a client scenario. And the area where you're stuck is that your hormone havoc requires a more dialed in approach. That's hard to hear. So women who come from a history of infertility, like myself, women who come from a history of having PCOS, hypothyroid, autoimmune conditions, struggled with your weight your whole life and you never really knew why. This hormone imbalance that we've had for most of our life and struggled with is really hard. And when we hit perimenopause, I'd say it's a lot of the women who are in their like late thirties, early forties in my program who are really struggling and they sign up like that because they're like, what, why is, why am I rapidly gaining weight? Why can I not have a single meal out and not see the scale jump four pounds? And you know what? I understand that the scale jumps four pounds, but when it stays post-cycle, and the weight just keeps piling on what's happening. So even though we have best methods that we, we call them rules of thumb in our Thrive After 35 framework, and everyone learns these rules of thumb and everyone gets our food list that has the best food choices for your health, hormones, longevity, fitness results, gut health. But unfortunately, some women really, really have to stay dialed in. I myself am one of them. I know I've referred to it in the past. We're called, I call myself a sensitive Sarah. The true root cause of that is some of us have like genetic predispositions to be slow detoxifiers. Uh, many of us have, are just have a family history of hormone dysregulation. Um, and then some of us come from a very tough past where we may have done a ton of chronic dieting, way too much over-exercising, struggled with body image, yo-yo dieting, and all of that adds up to the state of complete and total utter hormonal havoc. And unfortunately, in perimenopause, it rears its ugly head. So when women come into our program and some are seeing incredible results right away. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is the best program ever. This is so sustainable. My life is perfect. That does happen. And then we have others where it's a struggle and it's like, we're looking at a food log and, you know, we're fueling prior to fitness now, but maybe we're having something that's not an optimal choice. And it's like the days when we're choosing those suboptimal choices, or we're not following our portions from our coach to a T or those best food choices our body is going to still fight us. But my words of encouragement are that does not have to be forever. But that's why our program is six months long, because it's a joke to say that you are going to understand how to work with your body for the rest of your life. It is a joke to say that you're going to restore hormone balance, gut health, metabolism, and your energy within weeks. Now we get you feeling amazing right away, we can mitigate a lot of those, these symptoms right away within weeks. We do have that down in our program. But when it comes to wanting to lose the weight or to get back to feeling running your best, mitigating old injuries, getting that fit, tone, chiseled physique, that is a journey and it's going to take time. So unfortunately, some of us have to dial it in very meticulously with nutrition. Luckily, when you're in your you're in our program, there is no one size fits all approach. So we know how to manipulate, like we talk about pulling the different levers to say, what levers do we have to pull to get you your results, to work with the state of your body? But the good news is, is when you are repairing your hormone balance naturally through whole food, like we do, some minor supplementation here and there, 
my goodness, there is another side and you will get there. So communicate when you feel stuck, especially if you are in my program, you do not stay stuck. You know that we're going to fight alongside you. So some of some of the ladies and the listeners who aren't in our program who are just a member of our podcast community, I want you to stop and ask yourself, are you truly giving, giving it your all? And if you are, then that means you don't have the right strategies or support. You know where to find us. <laughs> and I hope that God, if you are looking outside of our community, that you find that practitioner that can help you. Because when you dedicate a phase of your life to understanding what's changing in your body and how to work with your individual body's needs, you're going to be okay. You really are. And I know that there's women listeners of the podcast who need to hear this because you're really feeling discouraged. Some of us require that extra dialed in approach. This phase of life is hard and these changing hormones influence every aspect of our life, including what to eat, when to eat it, how we put things together, time of day, fueling around our fitness and these rules of thumbs that can really support our body. Our body needs to be supported. So if it's not agreeing with you, it's still giving you these red flag signs and symptoms, whether it's the stuck weight, the low energy, a headache, um, put it on the, the belly fat, the bloating, the cravings, right? It's not you, it's the changing hormones and you can figure it out. So stay tuned to the podcast. And if you are in our community, do reach out for support if you're still feeling stuck, because that's not okay. All right, moving on to the next one, number three. Your body is overstressed and you're lacking a foundation to thrive through perimenopause. We talk about this a lot in that so many times we go right into like a fitness program. We go right to a running coach and we're like, I need the training plan. And I even had a woman the other day who came to me and she said, well, I keep gaining weight. I'm getting slower. I'm trying to do, you know, yoga, strength training. I hired my running coach. Yeah, she told me the reason why I'm slowing down is because I'm just not consistent. I said, oh, she sounds like a great running coach because that's a freaking line of bullshit for a woman in perimenopause, right? Um, no, you're, the way you train needs to change to support your changing hormones. The way you fuel needs to change to support your changing hormones and your changing body. And so to just like, completely ignore the fact that a woman in front of you is 35 or beyond, like your body is changing. And so when we're trying to take great advice, which in theory would be a great plan for maybe someone younger, someone who's male, a woman in optimal hormonal health, age 35 and over, I don't know who that is, but maybe they exist. <laughs> they have a couple, there's a couple genetic anomalies who are just like crushing it in life still and not struggling. Right. But when our body is overstressed, it doesn't matter how hard you diet. It doesn't matter how hard you exercise. In fact, those two things contribute to your body being overstressed. So it's going to fight every single darn goal you're trying to achieve. And that perimenopausal foundation for success, what does that mean? We talk about that a lot and we ensure that each woman understands what that means specific to her goals and body's needs. We talk about you need energy you need a metabolism, you need gut health, and you need your hormones balanced as much as possible. That is your perimenopause foundation for success. Without that foundation, good luck trying to lose the weight. It might come off, it's gonna come right back on. Good luck trying to go off your medications, right? You're gonna probably need more. And then, oh, that medication has a side effect, so now I didn't need another one to manage the side effect of this one. Oh no, you know, like it's just, hey, nothing's getting better because I'm not addressing the root cause. So, oh, it's just time to increase the dose. You know, this doesn't have to be our story. And the reason why it is, and it's so accepted, is because we're missing all those other pieces, the foundation and the stress management holistically. And that's diet and fitness related too. I know I'm speaking to an intelligent woman, the listener of this podcast. You're already dialed in with your fitness and your nutrition, most likely but it's got to change and it's got to adapt to this phase of life. And no, the answer is not going harder in your diet. It's not decreasing calories more. It's not taking away carbs or certain, you know, 
bad diet that is just, um, again, it's a reaction to what's happening in perimenopause. No one's stopping to say, why? Why does a woman's body not process carbs well? There's root cause mechanisms to that, right? So the root cause mechanism is typically estrogen's declining. So it's harder for our body to process carbohydrates. It's harder for it to use protein as fuel. So yes, it's more important to use optimal protein choices, to have the right types of carbs at the right time of day and have the right meal composition to balance our blood sugar. When we do that, we don't need to pull carbs. And doing that would be a disservice to an athlete or a woman who wants to be active for the rest of her life because our body thrives off of carbs. It feeds our gut microbiome. Go back to some of our carbohydrate episodes. I won't get down that rabbit hole because you guys know I easily can. However, that is our third area where we see individuals getting stuck, missing your perimenopause foundation for success and your body being overstressed. The two kind of go hand in hand because we want your body to be supported, loved, and ready to thrive. And you know what? Then it works with you. You can ditch the fat. You can feel your best. You can run your best. You can perform your best. You can hike your best. All the things that you love to do. So speaking of your perimenopausal foundation for success, are you finding it hard to put on muscle and maintain your amazing body composition or work towards chiseling it to feel strong and capable? Well, it's very easy to get stuck as our hormones start to change. As I just mentioned, it's harder for our body to process carbohydrates. Um, some strategies definitely change there. And strategies definitely change when it comes to the amount of protein you need, needing a little bit more. And this can become challenging as busy everyday women. We're active. We want to stay fit, toned, injury-free, and strong. We want to see, uh, we want to look and feel like we work out, right? And that can become harder to support through whole food nutrition. And when we're busy and we're going all the time, it is hard to get enough protein, to eat all the chicken, to eat all the eggs. And one thing that can help to fill the gap are a little product called Keon Aminos. Now you guys have heard me mention all throughout previous episodes about why we support Keon in their science-backed nutrition. It is truly amazing when a company goes above and beyond to have transparent labeling, to test for toxins, and to keep their products junk free. It's not actually easy to find on the sports supplement market. So here at the podcast, we do partner with Keon to get you guys an amazing discount on their products. And the one today I want to share is a little bit more about these Keon aminos. So what they are, it is what's inside protein. So it's protein broken down already for your body. It builds strong muscle, supports healthy hair, skin, and nails. And Keon aminos ensure that you get all of the essential amino acids that you need to succeed. You may have heard of BCAA products or branch chain amino acids. Guys, those are not the full spectrum of the amino acids that your body needs to succeed. Especially as we get older, we need more of an amino acid called leucine. So Keon has an amazing amino acid profile and that extra boost of leucine that we need to support muscle building and staying strong and injury free. Keon essential aminos do help you recover better so you can bounce back and get back to working out faster if you are injured. And when you take those days off, you can come back feeling energized and strong. So again, it's there's a lot of different amino products on the market. We partner with Keon because they are science-backed. They are going to go the extra mile to give you a money-back guarantee they have great customer service. Our clients at Breaking Through Wellness, they just absolutely rave about um, how they are, you know, you don't like the taste of something, you can swap out the flavor. You don't like a product, you can return it. They are very um, down to earth people as well. So we tend to be a down to earth podcast and they are down to earth people. So absolute perfect match. And they are going to hook you guys up with a discount, 20% off their products if you go to getkeon.com forward slash maximizing. So with that, guys, we'll get back into those top reasons why you are stuck. All right, number four. This is interesting. I see a lot of women who are so darn dedicated to their fitness. However, it is not specific to female 35 plus physiology or best methods. 
So an example could be you are a Peloton warrior. You love it. You are trying to see your best results and you're doing a different workout each time. You're doing as many reps as possible. You're doing faster. You're doing a total body workout, right? It's like, what, what are you achieving with that? Somebody tell me, right? Because that's not going to help a woman over 35 really truly see best results. You might see some, most people see amazing results right away, right? When you first start doing something, your body adapts. It's like, it's or your body responds. It's like, Ooh, something new. Cool. I'll see some changes. I may be talking from experience, you know, when I first downloaded my app and I was kind of got into it too, who didn't, but it's funny in our program, we kind of joke around Peloton burnout or any of these apps, right. That are just like generalized, very well-meaning, a great community, very motivating, but female 35 plus specific science is not there. So go back to our episodes about how to get strong, run your best and look fit. We'll give you a ton of strength training tips specific to female 35 plus. The other thing too, is you're trying so hard in like a group fitness class or, you know, give, like I mentioned before, even a plan from somebody who is very knowledgeable but are we applying the female 35 plus best practices? Are you lifting heavy enough? And I, I'm starting to get a little annoyed with this whole, like, I'm not going to say it, but there's a certain phrase around lifting heavy that everyone's very <laughs> into as a woman over 35, but we are missing something with that too, guys. We need to be slow and controlled and mindful in our movements. And I swear you will see kick ass physique results. So I'm not really talking about like the strength and power. Like we put power exercises strategically into our workouts, but it's not the heart of what we do um, because the women that we coach want like a fit and toned physique. Um, when you do a ton of power, you tend to get like the shorter muscles where they're thicker, they're very strong and it, it's a type of physique, right? It's more of a shorter, stocky, muscular look. We're looking for long, lean, just a fit and tone look with the women that I coach. So again, that's very strategically designed because you could take a, you know, lift heavy shit model, if you will, and you're going to drive power. You're going to drive strength performance, but when you're a runner, or you want a long lean look, that's a different path, right? We can still do all the things like make sure you're incredibly strong as you age, protecting you from injury, protecting your hormones, not crossing that stress tipping point or doing, you know, counterproductive strength training. It's just a different type. So you want to match your fitness strategy to your goals and your female 35 plus physiology. So it's interesting because we have some great programs or advice, um, loud advice. <laughs> you guys know there's some loud advice out there. Um, it's sort of taking over the industry and it's female 35 plus specific or specific to perimenopause and menopause. However, is it specific to your goals? I can't tell you how many people come to me, they've read certain books and they're like, why does it say that runners need to give up running in perimenopause? You know my answer? Because no one has developed the methods to help women run age 35 and beyond. Hey, I've got an industry leading accolade for that. You know, <laughs> I, it's, it's, um, no, you do not have to stop running in perimenopause. So if, if you're reading that, if you're seeing that, let's have a, an intelligent conversation around the mechanisms in the female body that are changing and how we help a female runner still feel, look, and run her best as she ages does not have to be counterproductive. So if you are getting a lot of messaging, which I know a lot of women runners are, and it's incredibly frustrating, let's have a conversation about it <laughs> because I would love to nerd out and support your success because I don't see a ton of practitioners doing that. And I use the word practitioner because there are certified run coaches who are very well-meaning but they're not going to look at you at a whole per as a whole person. And then when you have the weight coming on and the belly fat, or you're getting injured all the time and you're like, what's happening? Like, that's a frustrating place to be. So that's kind of what I tend to specialize in guys. You know where to find me at breakingthroughwellness.com. All right, moving on to our fifth one. And this just goes 
with the theme of today's podcast. What is holding us back? Why are we stuck in our health and fitness? Not addressing the root cause of your specific symptoms. Perimenopause is bio-individual, meaning the way your hormone hormone havoc shows up is very different than the way my hormone havoc shows up. And it's like, we have all these programs out there to help women in perimenopause, but it is so freaking different. One person, I was just talking to a woman the other day and she's like in her late fifties. And she's like, I, I'm, I was fine. I don't have a lot of symptoms. I just kind of have some belly fat. So, I mean, she's amazing, right? She crushed it. Others of us are like sitting here in our late thirties, early forties. And we're like, oh shit, do I feel like hell? (laughs) Oh my gosh, why me? And it's hard, right? So to get to those root causes of your symptoms, keep exploring, keep tuning into our podcast. We will do our best to share it, but it's so hard when it's literally like, you know, it can be cartilage degeneration. It can be stuck with injuries. It can be hot flashes. It could be cold flashes. It could be belly fat, which would indicate what? That you are low estrogen. Thigh fat, what does that indicate? Low, high estrogen. Interesting, right? Um, you are seeing facial hair and acne and weight gain. What the heck is that? Testosterone's off, right? Did you need lab work? No, you didn't. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, you can get lab work. It's very empowering to see how your hormones are changing, monitoring all the things, um, but it's not the key, right? That's not your root cause. The root cause is more towards the things that you're doing. Are you supporting your hormones to be balanced in this phase of life? Is your fitness matching your female 35 plus physiology? Are you using counterproductive solutions yet you have no freaking idea that you are? And so what's so interesting is we think, we hear a ton of like high performance or wellness solutions. So huge example is I worked in the NFL. Guys, I did it all. Like I'm talking 20 years ago when I worked in the NFL. (laughs) Yeah, I was doing the hot hot and cold bath therapy. We had hyperbaric chambers my athletes were sleeping in. We had IVs, we had a glutathione, we had the carnosine with the blah, 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 blah right? Red light therapy. Oh, here's dry needling. Oh, here's some magnet therapy that you put around an athlete's knee. Oh, here's a bod pod. Let's see our body composition. You know, like we literally did it all years ago. So I did it all. And you know what? It screwed me up because I didn't have someone guiding me and telling me this is the root cause of why you're stuck. And here's what you can do about it. And oh, that thing that you saw, that's really cool. Like as an example, sauna use, guess what? It's contributing to your symptoms. Do you know that if you do cryotherapy or use a sauna at the wrong time of day, you're screwing your circadian rhythm and your hormone balance? Has anyone ever told you that before? You know what's interesting? I partner with a wellness place here and I love them, but they don't have any knowledge around that because Amy went in the other day and started asking questions like, oh, what's the best time of day for a woman to do this? And they had no idea. And, you know, they're techs, they they run the machine. So they're not going to be as advanced as to have that knowledge. But ladies, do you know the mechanism of how you fall asleep at night is by your body cooling one to three degrees? You know how you can help that? You can take a hot bath or a sauna. That would be an appropriate time of day to have that. Why? Because you overheat your body and then the mechanism that comes afterwards is a cooling impact. So you would potentially sleep like a baby. You could also take a really nice Epsom salt bath with some lavender. I used to do that all the time when I was really struggling with my hormone habit because circadian rhythm and hormone balance was completely effed. So I used to do that like religiously almost every single night and it did help. It really did. Um, the other thing that's really interesting too, is like, if you did sauna in the morning, that could potentially be very counterproductive because you need your body to heat. And what happens again, when you go in the sauna is yes, your body heats temporarily, but then it has a cooling impact. 
So what would you do in the morning then? A morning would be an appropriate time of day for an ice bath or cryotherapy. You're going to get an adrenaline rush. You're going to get endorphin high. You're going to have an energized day. But I would not do that at night, ladies. <laughs> That's going to screw your success. Why? It's hard enough to sleep as a freaking perimenopausal woman. Let's talk about that. Right? <laughs> we can get through all the root causes of that, but I won't today. Um, but it's so interesting, right? Like having an expert look at your life and say, where are we unintentionally screwing it up? And it's so hard when we're bombarded with these solutions. You know, there's even another, you know, when we talk about the, the sleep thing, like melatonin, like that is a great way to screw your success. Take an exogenous hormone, meaning external from your body and give it to your body at night. And I, ladies in my program aren't going to laugh, but I did it. I took freaking melatonin the other day because I was struggling with my sleep with this gosh darn move and all the chaos of military life and blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> my husband bought these delicious freaking melatonin gummies and I was struggling with sleep and I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take them. So I took them for, and I also wanted to experiment, right? Because I, I always advise like, don't take the melatonin ladies. We're screwing our hormone balance. We really truly are air quote natural. Yes, it is, but it is a hormone. The last thing we need to do is give our body a hormone when we're trying to balance them. Um, cause one hormone influences all the other hormones. They work in a system. They are not singular, right? Okay. Now that you know that I'm sure you already did, but anyways, I took the melatonin for like a week Eh, it kind of sort of helped. I woke up like feeling all hungover and the, you know, but my cycle was a son of a bitch this month. And so I was just, I, I, you know, I kind of looked at the different variables and I was like, fucking melatonin, man. And I, I saw other things like oddit, oddities on the scale, my bloating, um, my cycle timing was even off. And I'm like, God darn it why do I have so much knowledge? That's annoying. You know, like I just wanted to knock myself out with some melatonin, damn it. No. So, I mean, it was such a fascinating takeaway for me because I experimented with it. Cause I was like, you know, maybe, maybe it'll be all right. Like this is the delicious gummy. I just want to take it. Uh, they get you with those gummies, man. Right. <laughs> Anywho, not only that melatonin is one of the most um, sleazy supplements on the market. Like you look into the research and sometimes they have three times the amount and sometimes they have none at all because it's not regulated. It's so screwed up. So it's just one that we don't touch in our program. I highly advise against it. And there are so many other sleep solutions, but I was just tempted by my husband's little gummies and I gave it a try and it was, it was terrible. And the women in our program who come in on melatonin and get off of it and use our other holistic solutions and especially when you're like balancing your blood sugar, your inflammation's low, you're working with a female physiology, you know, you don't really have sleep problems. Externally, life circumstances like myself, again, I was in that high stress phase of life. I mentioned it as one of my most highest stress phase of life. Yeah, um, sleep's going to be a little rough certain times. And I've always struggled with sleep pre-cycle, like PMS type. Um, I don't have the insomnia like I once did, but you know, these symptoms, they don't really ever completely go away. And I think we're living in a lie if we think that life is going to be perfect. But today you learned five reasons why you might still be stuck. Did you learn something? Are you critically thinking about your own life and where you may be unintentionally getting it wrong? or unintentionally not giving it your all, giving it a fighting chance. With that, ladies, you know where to find us at breakingthroughwellness.com if you're seeking one-on-one -on -one support. Tune in next week. I'm sure we'll have some nuggets to drop. And with that, hop on over to breakingthroughwellness.com. We have our free nutrition guide. We've got some master classes. We've got our one-on-one -on -one program. And with that, give the episode a subscribe, download, or review to support our work in the world as a small company with big accolades and big results. Take care. And of course, your friendly medical disclaimer, no information on this podcast 
or provided through any of our services should be used to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any disease or condition. Please always seek the advice of a trusted medical professional, such as your doctor, as needed. We are collaborative here at Breaking Through Wellness as an active member of your team when we work in one-on-one coaching services only. With that, we are wishing you a vibrant, healthy, and high-performance day, finding all the information you need to unlock your best with less stress.